Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today I'm going to do another amendment to my express passenger train 60337 in order to make it smoother and have less friction going around my track and that's with the introduction of Jacob's bogies. Okay, so what are Jacob's bogies and why do we need them? They sound odd. Well, instead of having a separate bogey on the end of each railway carriage with buffers and a join between the two, we can have one shared bogey that spreads the weight between the two carriages and kind of smooths out the ride without the additional weight and drag of all those additional wheels. Uh, they were invented by a German railway engineer called Wilhelm Jacobs and uh, basically they have the benefits of improving safety because there's nothing to come uncoupled in the event of a derailment. They're lower weight because they're a lot smaller. Uh, they're simpler and cheaper to construct, create less noise because, well, there's fewer wheels on the tracks. Uh, but the bad side is that they take uh, a workshop to undo them, really, because it's kind of a semi-permanent coupling of the two carriages in question and well each one has a greater load on top of them but that's no problem for an express train like this indeed the real life TGVs do use this system including the Lego TGV 10233 the Horizon Express from 2013 so what are we going to do we're going to be replacing this setup with two separate bogies with this setup one shared one and that gives us the added benefit of a bit more room so we can add some extra stuff on the underneath of the train to make it look a lot more interesting and then we end up with this and I think you'll agree that looks pretty good very streamlined and it should help in Lego terms as well by reducing the drag and noise and friction of these wheels as well so maybe you're sold on the benefits of using Jacob's bogies, but you're wondering, well, why can't I use the standard build from the Horizon Express set? Surely that build that I've replicated here will work on this new train as well, right? Well, no, actually. Uh, there must be some difference between those old bases and these new ones, because the new carriages spoil on these studs on the corners of the wheel pieces and they're very difficult to move indeed. Essentially, if I put this in the bottom, what happens is that when it goes around a curve, it hits those studs at, well, not much angle at all, uh, which isn't enough to go around a standard radius Lego curve. So what actually happens is it then rides over the stud and comes up at this incredibly high tilted angle causing well major issues possibly even a derailment and we don't want that at all so we need some sort of solution now we don't want to increase the distance between the two pins because that will cause a great uh, deal of ugliness when we have a great big gap between our railway carriages so we want to keep that distance the same whilst also increasing the distance between the two wheel pieces from four studs here to five. And that's what my solution does. If we look at this, we have got the pins being the exact same distance apart, like that. Uh, but now we've also got a distance between the two wheel pieces of five studs. And that means if I introduce this to our carriage, that it can turn way more than it did before without spoiling and can get around a standard Lego curve absolutely no problem whatsoever. Good, good. Well, how do we build one of these things? Uh, well, before we start, I just want to say it works exactly the same whether you use the old wheel style with the metal axle or the newer style that come with this set. No problem whatsoever, it's exactly the same build. Uh, and indeed, if you want to see the parts list, it is in the description of this video. So do remember to like, comment and subscribe if you use that. Uh, so let's get started on the kind of middle section that uses a lot of brackets to hold on to the side detail. Firstly, a row of brackets kind of pointing down that will straddle these two pieces, giving them a little bit of strength. It's a bit odd this build because it's all odd numbers of studs long rather than even, which is a bit easier to do usually. Um, and it's worth mentioning that a lot of the colours described in that parts list aren't fundamental, especially for these parts right in 
the middle of the build because, well, you aren't going to see them, so it doesn't really matter so much. So you should be able to experiment with the ones you've got in your collection. Uh, but then for the side detail, I'm adding two by two plates, a one by two Technic brick, could just be a regular brick, but I've got loads of those hanging around, uh, a black jumper plate, two by two, then one of these pieces, which is harder to get hold of, but is available freely on uh, Lego Bricks and Pieces, if you can't find it elsewhere. Uh, a grill piece, and then just to finish off the detail, I'm using one of these kind of half circle one by one tiles as well, just to make it look really interesting. So now I can do exactly the same build on the other side, all in one go, there we go. So that's the center section done. Then we can start to bring in the wheels, and this is where it gets a bit more delicate, just because essentially it hasn't got its strength yet. So two by six holding that in place. Then one of the Technic modified plates with a pin on and a two by two. And then just to pin that to the bottom, I'm going to use a curved slope, the inverted style two by two to make it connect onto there as well. Then I can do the exact same thing on the other side. Make that hang on there. That makes it look a lot neater as well. Put another one by two in the middle. And then to give it yet more strength, I'm going to put some one by four tiles in the middle and fill in the holes with some one by ones. Okay, nearly there. And then just to make this bit smooth, on the underside of the carriages, I'm putting some round tiles, kind of on three studs, just overlapping that Technic piece a little bit. And that will make everything work perfectly. So there we go, that is the build in its entirety. Not that difficult at all. But as I said before, we've got a little bit of space on the end of each of these carriages for an extra bit of kit. So, I thought I'd show you how to build the ones that I've done for those as well. And essentially we've got a two by three brick, another one by two, doesn't have to be Technic at all. Some inverted slopes, and then some textured profile bricks like that. And then we just need a method to connect it to the underside of the train. And you'll notice the train is six studs wide and this build is five studs wide um, because of the weird peculiarities of the underside of it we're only able to use one strip of these uh, studs. So I'm using these one by two curved ones just because I've got loads of those to hand, but you could use square ones or a three and a two or whatever you want really. And essentially then if we get another carriage, we can pull off the old bogey and attach this to the five circular anti-studs on the underside there. And you'll see that that line there prevents us from attaching anything with the next row of studs there. So that essentially goes on like that just attached with those studs, and then that can go in there. And there's plenty of room for that to move around and not clash with the bit we've added. But yes, oh, looks good. And I just absolutely love the way that this sort of edging bit kind of overlaps the edge of it just a little bit and makes it look really interesting. So whether you've got the original carriages like this one or modified carriages, like my double decker here, then essentially it works exactly the same. And as long as I can get that one on, yeah, looks really good. So how about that? So the other real benefit of this is before we had four sets of train wheels, two bogey plates and two magnetic buffers. And this build has only used two wheels. So we're actually two bogey plates, two wheels and two buffers up that we can use for other builds. And those are quite valuable pieces. Cool. Right. Now I've got two sets of these going. I think I can put them on my train tracks and have them whizzing around my city. All right. Back in the Lego room and the train is reconstructed with our Jacob's bogey straddling carriages one and two and carriages three and four. You don't do them on every single one because otherwise it becomes a bit unwieldy for the train company in order to sort of rearrange trains if they ever have to do that. So that is a good compromise, just doing them in pairs like on the TGV. So let's set this thing going. I don't know if it will be noticeably smoother, but we can uh, have a guess. Do you know what? I don't know if it's my imagination, but that did seem a lot smoother. Batteries might be running low now, but it's uh, 
Wow, I think it might be getting a bit faster, so you'll have to do a scientific experiment to see if you can uh, get the decibel level from the beginning of this video without me talking <laughs> and compare it to the one now. But I tell you what, it works. They're very smooth. I think we've just got to decide whether they look better. And for me, it is a very easy decision. I really like the look of them as well. And what makes them even better from my perspective is the fact that they're, well, unique to this train because all my other trains have the same sort of setup. So yeah, I'm very happy with it. Uh, but do tell me what you think because I'd very much appreciate your view. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a brick haul because it will be Wednesday. Then on Monday, we'll be doing another mock build like the ship that I just completed over there. Uh, and then next Monday, I think I'll be doing another train build, but this time probably not for the express passenger chain, but for my incredibly long cargo train like the classic space build we did last week, which is very funny when it's moving. So until all of that, see you!